everybody, welcome back to Auto Scholar with Mr. B. I'm Mr. B and today we have this 2011 Chevy Volt in for some service work. And this is going to be the first video of our Chevy Volt series that we have here on Auto Scholar with Mr. B. Let me give you a little background on this vehicle. This is a 2011 Chevrolet Volt. This is a series hybrid. So it is a plug-in hybrid as well. It does have a plug-in that goes um, right here, plugs up and can uh, run, you know, 25 to 50 miles, depending on battery condition on just the battery as well. So the battery in this is much larger than say the Toyota Prius or the Honda IMA systems that we have and that we've dealt with on the channel before. So uh, how did I get this car? Well, um, I found this car on Marketplace and purchased it. This car was literally in a coma when I got it. I had to go and uh, tow it to the shop and kind of try to figure out what was going on. And so this video is basically on showing you how to get one of these out of Tacoma because uh, this car had been to two different shops, including a dealership uh, that deals with GM vehicles and they could not get it running. And uh, it didn't take me long to get this thing fired up and running. It's a very, very nice car. Uh, I've enjoyed tinkering with it. Uh, it does have a lot of miles on it. It has almost 275,000 miles on it. So uh, there is some, some age and some wear, but it has had the traction battery replaced within the last five years. So, uh, you know, when I first purchased this vehicle, I was expecting it to be a bad traction battery. And I got it at a fairly good price for something like that to be wrong with it. However, I did find out that that was not the problem. The traction battery was actually fine. And so uh, when I got it back to the shop, of course, nothing, it had, you know, everything was black. It, didn't light off anything and so whenever you get a EV or a hybrid it doesn't matter which one but especially a Chevy Volt you need to check the 12 volt battery so there is a 12 volt battery that runs the 12 volt system in these cars and it's important to remember these cars have two electrical systems okay it has the 360 volt high voltage system that runs you know your, your drive line and everything else and then we also have a lower voltage a 12 volt system and most hybrids have a 12 volt system and most EV cars have a 12 volt system. Some Teslas have 16, but I'm not gonna to get too deep into that. But uh, so the 12 volt system is going to control the high volt system. So if you have a problem with the 12 volt system, then that is going to directly reflect into the car not working like it should. So first thing I did was I look at the 12 volt battery and uh, these cars most Hybrids are going to use what they call an AGM or absorbed glass mat battery. And this is found in the trunk of the vehicle. And first thing I did was test the voltage there and there was like two volts or something like that. It was almost no, no volts. So I pulled the battery out and I put it on my Medtronic's diagnostic tester. I have a GM Medtronic's tester and I'll show you that tester here in a little bit to show you what kind of tester you need. Um, the, the standard run of the mill, uh, battery tester is not going to do very well with an AGM battery of this caliber. So, uh, I put it on charge, trying to see if I could get anything. I looked at the date code on the battery and it was 2016. So the battery was very old. So I already had in my head, okay, this thing's going to need a 12 volt battery just out the box. And when these batteries go bad, there's really a lot of things that can go wrong with an EV or a hybrid, not just the Volt, but even uh, I had a friend with a Chevy Volt with a B and uh, which is a full EV. And uh, it was the, the windshield wipers were going off, the horn was honking and everything. And all it ended up being was her 12 volt battery and that car was bad. So uh, if you've got an older 12 volt battery in your EV or hybrid, uh, you need to start testing it regularly and think about replacing it. So uh, the AGM batteries on these, I purchased with my industrial discount. Uh, the battery cost $168 and I went back with an AC Delco. So AC Delco is the original manufacturer of this battery. And I decided uh, for $168 to put the exact thing that this came out of the factory in, uh, back in, it, it was gonna be a, a good idea to do that. There are some uh, aftermarket companies that make batteries, AGM batteries, they're compatible with this car. However, I think if you can go with a factory recommended anything, you should. So we put a 12 volt battery in this car uh, and uh, I started getting something. So the car came on, it would not, uh, it would not go into drive mode, it would not charge. So I tried to plug the charger in 
the EV battery would not take any charge. And I had, oh God, I must've had 75 codes in the system. So uh, the scan tool I'm using for these diagnostics is a Snap-on Zeus scan tool suite. And this is probably priced outside of what a, an average DIY person is going to have. The scan tool is about you can get them used for about four to $5,000. Mine with the workstation cost about $15,000. So uh, this may be out of the realm of a DIY project. However, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys about how I got this thing back running because if you go to your technician, they may not know and you may be able to give them information to get your car running. So I had all these codes in it. So I took screenshots and recorded every single code. Most of them were low voltage codes and communication codes from the CAN bus talking back and forth to the control modules. So all of this is telling me, just like on a regular gasoline or a diesel engine, if you don't have a good 12 volts in your system, you're definitely gonna have some communication problems. You're gonna have some sensor readings that aren't correct and things like that. So 12 volts aren't just uh, you know, important to these cars, really to any automobile on the road, if you have a good 12 volt battery, you're uh, definitely starting off on the right foot on a diagnostic. So place the battery, got it started up. Uh, again, it wouldn't run. So engine wouldn't start, you know, I popped the hood to try to uh, engage the engine in the uh, test mode and nothing. Uh, also instrument cluster would not light. So that's a different problem that we found out a little bit later, but my instrument cluster was not working. And with a little further research, we found that that is a common issue with these cars. And I'll go into a video on how we fixed that as well. But uh, I deleted all the codes, hoping maybe that with this new 12 volt battery, the car would you know kind of reboot itself and maybe start running and driving like it was supposed to. However, I went through the scan tool uh, you know, just like clear all codes and it cleared all the codes out, but I had two that were sticking. And those codes were, I got it written down here because these codes are like long, all right? Engine code uh, in the engine control module, I had a P1E00 and it, and all the code says is refer to OEM repair manual. So basically it just said, hey, look in the manual and see you know, what this code refers to. And basically this code just says, hey, you've got a problem somewhere else in the car. And um, if you don't have access to a factory repair manual, I actually have a solution for you uh, with a company called eManuals. And they, uh, you can just buy your service manual for a Chevy Volt. And it's the same service manual that a GM tech would use. And it's very similar to a program I use called ShopKey and Identifix, and it gives you just the factory level information. And uh, repair information on this car is key because I would had not known a lot of this if I wouldn't had the right information. So the first code, P1E00, that's just a code saying, hey, there's another code somewhere. Uh, the second code that I had was in the high voltage control module number two, okay? And that was a P0AF, a, so P0 Alpha Foxtrot Alpha, and that was a hybrid EV vehicle battery system voltage low. So basically it's just saying there's a low voltage somewhere in there. So as much as I tried just to conventionally delete these codes in this car, uh, couldn't get it to charge, couldn't get it to run, couldn't get it to do anything. Uh, so uh, I, I started researching and studying and trying to figure out exactly what was going on. And I discovered that uh, there is secret codes in the high voltage control module that if you don't, under a special procedure in the scan tool, if you don't go in and actually delete those codes, they will come back on the other side, the not so secret code side. So what I did, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you over here to my scan tool, I'm gonna show you the procedure. If you have a snap-on style scan tool, uh, this will be the same procedure as uh, anything else. Uh, so uh, you go in the functions menu into the high voltage two control module and you can delete the, what they call high voltage trouble codes. And if you don't do that, this car isn't gonna go anywhere. And I don't care if, you, if you've got a low battery because you left your headlights on or whatever, this car is gonna be dead in the water if you don't do this. And even though I had fixed 
the overlying problem of the battery, the 12 volt battery being bad, replaced it. The car did not know it was fixed. So you have to go in there with your scan tool and you have to tell the car, hey, delete these codes. Then you go back and you'll delete all the other codes and then your car should come back to life. So after I did that, and I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. I ran the battery down twice. It, you know, it started running, driving, uh, everything worked with the exception of the instrument cluster, which is a different problem. But the car started charging, it's charging up. I'm driving it around. Uh, the car has just been a dream since then. So um, I ran the battery down. The battery has uh, told the engine to come on. The engine starts up. I can drive it on engine only. I can drive it on the battery. Uh, and no codes in the system whatsoever. I've set all my readiness codes for emissions testing and everything else. So the car to me is fixed. So let me take you to the scan tool and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to fix this vehicle. Okay, so on my Zeus right here, I've already put in year, make, model, and it's self-identified and everything else. And it comes up to the code scan screen. And if you go to the code scan to scan the codes, it's going to go through the whole car and it takes forever on this one because it has so many control modules. And you are gonna get a bunch of codes if you have a low 12 volt battery. And you can delete them all, but you're gonna have these two that hang up, that P1 E00 and that P0AFA is going to be in there. And so you can delete, you can go into each control module and try to delete. You can delete all you want to, but until you do this procedure, the car is not going to wake up. So you see down here where it says service resets and relearns here. You're going to click on that. You're going to go down to, well, I went too far. Hybrid electric vehicle, okay? So you have these five options here. And the top right on the fifth option is clear high voltage DTCs, okay? So it's right here. So I'm gonna click that. And then functional resets and calibrations. You're gonna go to hybrid control module, clear secured high voltage DC DTCs, okay? So that's in module one, and this is for module two. And you're just gonna go through that procedure right there. And the car is going to wake up uh, you know, it, it's going to be a miracle and uh, it's going to fix the car. Then after that, you know, you want to go through the standard, just clearing the codes and everything else. And the car will be uh, fixed if that's if the 12 volt battery was the problem, because that's what worked for me. All right. This is the uh, Midtronics uh, GR8 battery tester here. This is GM's uh, battery testing and charging equipment they have. Um, I, had, I just happen to have two of these. You can see actually the GM emblem comes up. However, if uh, you don't have one of these, uh, a regular charger that has an AGM um, option is going to be a uh, just as just as good as well. Uh, and if your battery charger doesn't have an AGM option, you can uh, remove your battery and take it to any of your auto parts stores, your O'Reilly's, your uh, AutoZone, your advanced auto parts, and they should have a tester like this that will charge and test your battery. So fortunately, we were able to get this car fixed for a whopping $168 for a battery. And again, this car had sat up for over six months at different shops and they could not identify the problem or fix the issue. So the only, only advice I have with working on these vehicles uh, really for the moment is to keep it simple. So something very simple, such as a 12 volt battery can cause the whole car to go haywire. So when approaching these vehicles, I know they're complicated vehicles and I know as upper level technician that's going to be required to work on one of these, you're going to want to overcomplicate things. But I promise you, if you just take it back to basics, rely on your training and really figure out what's going on. So a battery test six months ago could have fixed this car and uh, knowing what to do with the scan tool could have fixed this car. So the fact that two shops missed this repair is really concerning for our industry, not just uh, for the customer. Uh, we really need to make sure that we're taking this stuff and breaking it down into smaller pieces. It's much easier to fix cars that way. So I hope that if you have a Volt, there's a bunch of other things that could actually cause these problems, but I hope it's something as easy as the 12 volt battery. And remember, if you have to replace your 12 volt battery, you need to go with a factory AGM battery, at least as a baseline. If you want to do something crazy when your car is running, that's fine, but go ahead and get you a GM 
you know, AC Delco, AGM battery and put it in the car. And I hope that, that fixes your problem. Just don't forget to erase those super duper heavy duty secret codes in the uh, high voltage control module. So hopefully you learned something. If you did, please give me a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. We're gonna have to start a whole series on this little Chevy Volt. And hopefully we'll have some more content coming up pretty soon on some other things as well, uh, dealing with uh, hybrid vehicles and high voltage uh, diagnostics and testing. So uh, again, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, BK. Just look up Master Tech Mr. B, Auto Scholar Mr. B. You can find me at any of those places. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments for me. I'll do the best I can to give you a proper answer. And we'll see you next time on Auto Scholar Mr. B.